What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. In today's video, we're gonna work on a trellis for these heirloom tomatoes that we planted. You can see these guys are already laying on the ground. Now some of them's already got tomatoes on them. So we're gonna get some of these guys trellis today. I don't know that we'll get all of them, but I'm gonna carry you around and I'm gonna give you a shot of what we got going on. It's July the 1st, so we're on the downhill side of this year. We are already on the other side of the summer solstice. And I'm gonna explain to you what that means. We're also gonna talk about some of our cool season crops that we've already got started and what we've got left to start and why we're starting this early in the year. So stick around. All right, so we talked a little bit ago about cool season crops and what we're gonna get started for our fall season, our fall plantings. And, you know, the fact remains, we're still planting crops for summer. We're still planting warm season crops. Every other week, I'm starting squash and zucchini, cucumbers, and I think I have already started my last round of tomatoes for this year. I'm not sure if I got enough time to squeeze another plant in or not, but we have already got some collars started and we got our Brussels sprouts. Right here is the Brussels sprouts I started earlier. These were started on June, June the 15th. And this is Dagan. I guess that's how you pronounce it, Dagan. And I got another tray that I started like two weeks later. And that's these guys right here you can see they're a whole lot smaller that's squash that's squash that's uh patty pan squash and this is cabbage actually and these four trays here are two different varieties of collards that we started we got a top bunch and we got a flash there's uh 650 head of collards sitting there and we will start way more than that there's probably going to be 3,000 head of collards going the ground between now and mid-august so um we're starting this early because of the varieties that we got and we still got cauliflower broccoli so a lot more cabbage um greens like turnips and mustard that we got to start well we won't start those in trays we'll direct seed those but yeah when you're talking about cool season crops in the summer or excuse me in the spring when you start your crops i mean you got the light working with you because you're gradually increasing in daylight length up until the summer solstice which is on june the 20th which is basically the longest day of the year Right now we're working with over 14 hours of daylight. That's why everything's growing like it is. It's, it's happy, it's got plenty of sun, it's got plenty of energy, you know, to make all that new growth. But as the year moves on, now starting after the summer solstice, we start to lose daylight every day up until the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. So between now and mid-August, I'm gonna say the second, third week in August, we, have, we wanna have our plants ready to go in the ground. I have a date set the second week in August to have all of my transplants in the ground, in the garden, ready to go for fall. Um, you know, a lot of people like to think of fall planting as planting in the fall time. That's not the way it works. We plant in the summer to harvest in the fall. And we have to plant varieties that will mature in that time length in order to have a harvest in the fall. Now, you might be thinking, I mean, dude, it's 100 degrees out here right now. And it's, I think it's 87 degrees a day, which today's cool. Yesterday was miserable hot. But the humidity's a little low. We got a little bit of a breeze, so it's a little, you know, comfortable working out here. But I'm still planting cucumbers. I'm still planting peppers. I'm still planting tomatoes. I'm still planting squash and zucchini. All of that good stuff that's getting us through market now. But you have to keep in mind that later on in the year, September, October, you're you're way down on the light spectrum you're down to like 11 and a half hours um seriously i mean you're losing so much time that you don't have the energy you don't have the light the plants need you do but it grows so slowly that i mean if you wait till you know september mid-september first october to plant for fall that mean you're not going to get a harvest you're just not going to get anything worth harvesting to carry to market i mean you can get spinach and you can get mustard and things like that to grow but if you're going to grow a cabbage or turnips or anything that requires a any length of time to form a head it's just never going to happen that's why you need to be more proactive and start on it now so in eight weeks six to eight weeks we're going to have a viable transplant to put in that garden and you can see i've kind of worked my way through here and cleaned all this up trying to get it prepped for crops but you need to be getting stuff ready now so you got a good transplant to put in the ground mid-august when it's hot scorching hot outside be ready to irrigate regularly until that plant can fend for itself and then come october november you will be ready to harvest from those plants take my word for it i've made no mistakes i've waited till the end of august to put my collars in the ground i waited till the mid-september to plant turnips and things of that nature and it just was not 
the harvest that I should have gotten. I mean, if those plants did not have enough time to get established and get mature before the light level started dropping and the plants started slowing down and not growing as much. They remain green, they look great, they just didn't grow that quick because you didn't have that light level and you didn't have that heat to drive all that new growth. So I'm in zone 8A, 8B, 8A slash, I mean kind of in the middle of the road, central North Carolina, right on the line. I can throw a rock and hit South Carolina. That's how close I am to it. So, I mean, if you are in the same neck of the woods that I am, then you need to be looking at getting your thing started now. Some people say you're early. Some people say that you know you're right on time. I'm thinking between now and the middle of the month, the middle of July, I want to have everything that I want to put in the ground mid-August started and ready to you know start fertilizing, start feeding these plants, start getting them stronger. That's where I am with fall season crops. And I just got another shipment in a day from Seedway, and I got a, a big shipment in the other day from Harris Seeds and Johnny's of all of my cool season stuff. So I'm up to date on my seeds. I've got everything I need from here on out to the end of the year. That being said, like I just showed you, I still have plenty of plants to put in the ground for summer. I mean, our summer growing season won't be over till I guess October till it starts cooling off. Um, plenty of tomatoes. All of these tomatoes, these are caimans, all of these are cherry tomatoes, and all of these are red deuce and red snapper. And these tomatoes are gonna go in these tunnels that we're putting up. And oh yeah, stick around to the end of this video because I got a surprise for you guys I wanna show you. We still got peppers, we still got uh, beets, I got fennel, I got eggplant peppers um, more squash more cucumbers uh, these are tomatoes too and like i said we still got plenty of plants to put in the ground for summer to go to summer markets and we're already planning for our fall markets that's why i'm saying you got to be more proactive if you're going to do this year round you better be ready for the fall season when the holiday season rolls around people are looking for turnips people are looking for collars they're looking for mustard they're looking for spinach beets all that good stuff you got to be thinking ahead of time so you've got something to take the market towards the fall when things are not growing and that's where these tunnels are going to come into play and we'll get more into that whenever it comes that time to start transplanting or transferring from summer growing crops to fall and winter growing crops because we can get away with a little bit in these tunnels as far as heat but you can't manipulate the light you just can't do it so we're going to have to focus on plants that don't need all that much light and I'm, i will get into that later on but for right now we're going to get back in this tunnel here because i got a new trellising technique that i want to try and i didn't come up with this and i didn't read it anywhere one of our subscribers actually put it in the comments of the way they did it and i got to thinking about it i said you know what there's no reason why that shouldn't work so i got all the material that i needed and i got some ready to hang and i'm gonna give you an idea and show you what we're fixing to do all right so if you look up here you can see these tunnel hooks are hanging and what they're hanging from is a brace or purlin off of this tunnel and what's hanging from that purlin is a shower hook stainless steel shower hook and i know you you guys have seen these a million times but basically they just clip together like this and you push them together and like there you go and you just hang down and they can slide back and forth off of that piece of three-quarter pot and then you take a tomahawk and you hook in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down and i'm going to put these clips all the way down through here and we're going to drop down and like i said we're probably not going to get them all today because it is it is stupid hot in here right now and i'm gonna do a few on video to give you an idea of you know how it's going to work and then uh, we're going to get out of here and we're going to find something else to do but i got to get this whole center road right here you can see is a mess in there and i mean we harvested off of that road just like we did this first row up until now and there's a ton of green tomatoes in there but they just i mean it's done run its course those were the primo reds so we're going to get those out of here and i'm going to put some caiman the caiman tomatoes that we started they're out here on the track and um, they're doing surprisingly well. They have outrun everything else out there, fertilized at the same time. They have doubled in size um, just in a matter of weeks. So we're going to put a round of those in here. And we're going to put a round in that other tunnel outside before we put the plastic on. But first, we're going to get in here and kind of get some of these tomatoes strung up and give you an idea how this is going to work. All right, guys, so as you can see, we got the tunnel hooks hanging. And what I did was took a length of this string and dropped it down until it touched the ground right beside that plant. Now. We're basically going to do these first two to get an idea of this, how it's going to work and where I need to position them. The good thing is we can slide these things back and forth so as they grow up the string, we can lower and lean these things and just keep pushing them that way. Um, there's 66 plants in here and I think I lost one, so there's 65 plants in this row, so we got a grocery plenty. 
but we're going to get these first two done to see how it's going to work and then we'll move on with the rest of them later on all right try to give you guys an idea of what i'm doing here so i got a this regular old uh weed mat staple and what i'm gonna do is go just wrap it on here and i'm gonna go in at an angle right up under that tomato plant and get as close as i can to it and i'm not going to pull super tight but i'm going to pull it up enough to where it makes that line taut and i'm just going to tie a knot in the bottom of it to secure it in place now i should hold it i used to do it this way with a 60 penny nail and it worked pretty good but as that plant gets a little bigger we'll put a little bit more pressure on that string so what I'm going to do now is take some of these clips and I'm going to pull this plant up to it. Try to get close to the main branch as I can. And I'm going to clip that thing to it right below where it splits. Now this one here is already trying to make a double leader so I'm going to cut that off. I don't want them double leader and I want single leader plants. That way they're more manageable. To me they are. I've done double leaders and yeah you can um, double your harvest but if you do your whole house with double leaders and you start losing plants then you lose twice the harvest so um that's why we kind of stick to this so i'm gonna put two clips on it just for now to kind of straighten them up because like i said they had been laying on the ground trying to grow up and they got a little kink to them so i'm gonna leave that one like it is and go in here and sucker it right quick and there's not that many on it but there is one or two we're gonna go ahead and sucker it that way you can put all the energies into making fruit and call that one good let me get back so y'all can get a better look at it so staple in here this is what we use in there staple string a couple clips and as this thing goes we'll start taking clips off the bottom of it and then this string goes up and hook that timer hook and we're going to move on to the second one which is over there and we're just going to do that back and forth all the way down this road not going to do many i might do these four here and then call it a day because like i said it's super hot in here right now we can come back in here later on this evening when the sun goes down and work on this a whole lot more comfortable and uh than it is right now but i'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more and give you an idea of what we're doing Off here i'm gonna show you the surprise i was telling you about earlier we get any sunshades off so i can see it's dark in this barn so uh farmer friend just come out with a new tunnel called a cat max and it's a 21 foot wide and you can get multiple links on whatever you want and we we put ourselves on the waiting list april late april early may and before they ever came out and i got an email a couple weeks ago and said that they were ready for production and wanted enough we want to go ahead and follow through with the order absolutely and i ordered a 21 by 50 foot cat max and here it is sitting on the pallet got all the bows this is inch and five eight bows now not inch and three eighths inch and five eighths bows this is what i use for my ground post on this one um wiggle wire tracks the plastic is leaning up back there if this doesn't go with this tunnel this is the double a uh, wiggle wire track for this tunnel I got outside. I was going to put a wood hip board on it, but I seen these over here on Tunnel Vision. Go check them out. Got a lot of tunnel parts. Um, fairly inexpensive. I ordered those for the tunnel that I got outside. So it's right now it's an all metal tunnel, no wood in it so whatsoever. Um, this tunnel here come complete with everything that you need to put it up and set for in wall. And this is what this is: Farmer Friend Caterpillar. They call it a cat map tunnel, but it's a uh, it's not the gothic it's the classic um that's what i got we don't have snow loaded around here we rarely see snow i mean we do but it's gone the next day so guys i think this is where i'm gonna call a wrap for this one i'm gonna give you some footage of me doing the rest of these tomatoes later on this evening but for right now i gotta get in here and get started if you missed the video when we put those heirloom tomatoes in here i'm gonna put a link to it up here and if you found anything useful anything entertaining or you just want to know more about our farm click this subscribe button over here in the corner as always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.